There has been another mass whale stranding, this time in the Chatham Islands. Up to 90 pilot whales were stranded last night at Hanson Bay, but up to 40 were able to refloat themselves. When the Department of Cons Conservation arrived, all but one of the 51 remaining whales were dead. Another had to be euthanised. Dave Carlton of DOC says today has been a long one. We got a call last night at about uh, 6.30 Chatham Islands time to say that um, there was a, a mass stranding of pilot whales uh, out at Owinger in front of um, some houses out there. Um, so, yeah, so we went out and, um, yeah, had a bit of a look and, yeah, sure enough, there was yeah, roughly about 50 uh, pilot whales on the beach and on the rocks around there as well, uh, with about another 30 or so threatening to beach. Uh, because it was sort of getting on dark, there was a lot of blood in the water from the rocks. Um, uh, yeah, the shark risk was 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 great. Um, there's not much more we could do last night, so um, yeah, so we we basically re went back out there first thing this morning, um, and luckily some of the whales must have swum off in the night, um, and you know, we were left with 50 on the beach. Um, of those. Most of them, well, almost all of them were dead. Um, there was just one that we, uh, we, we felt we had to put down. Uh, it was too far up to refloat and in a very bad condition. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, so we basically spent the day um, taking the whales and, um, and disposing of them. So um, did you bury them, David? Do you bury them or what do you do? Yeah, in this case we did. Um, because they've come up in front of a whole pile of houses there, um, that's a significant biohazard for the local community. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously that's not ideal, particularly, you know, the, they take many weeks to sort of break down and, and become very toxic. That's um, a lot so, of yeah, whales, a lot of whales to deal with. Who did you have helping you and how long did it take? Yeah, well, the local community out of Owing is pretty, pretty, pretty amazing, actually. And um, yeah, so a couple of locals there turned up with a bulldozer and a digger, and so and also managed to find uh, a space in a paddock um, where we could dig a big trench. And so yeah, we basically spent the day um, yeah moving the, the 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 pilot whales from the beaches and the rock platforms. Um, out to the trench site, and um, yeah, it actually went really well. Um, you know, I thought we were going to be out there for a couple of days, but we've managed to actually get the whole thing done by this afternoon. So yeah, do the local the ewe do the local ewe take away any part of the whales at all? Not from pilot whales. There's not really anything on them that's worth taking. The teeth are very small, and the bones aren't aren't, aren't really sort of big enough for carving either. So mm -hmm. yeah, pilot whales we just we just tend to dispose of. David, any clues as to what what happened here? Why they came ashore? No, no. It's um, yeah. You know, it's one of those enduring mysteries that you know no one really knows why whales do it. Um, yeah, yeah. There's a number of theories out there. Um, yeah, yeah. One of the most more common ones is that you know the low sloping sort of um, beaches confuse their sonar, but. But these ones actually came up in a, a quite a rocky bay, so mm. it kind of it, it, yeah, it doesn't fit with that theory. So yeah, so no, it's really anyone's guess. There's been a few strandings so far. I mean, have you got any thoughts on how many more we might expect over the summer? Oh, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to jinx it. Um, yeah, obviously, for the Chathams, it is a whale stranding hotspot. So um, yeah, we, yeah, we we do see uh, whales on a, on a reasonably regular basis. Um, uh, we haven't had a, one of this size for, for a little while, but um, but yeah, it is quite common to to at least get one or two stranded, you know, somewhere around the island on, mm. on you know, sort of a, a, a two monthly sort of basis, really. I suppose it kind of creates a dilemma because these are beautiful, majestic creatures, and our instinct is to try and save them and put a lot of effort into trying and save to save them. But there is a school of thought that is that we should. Um, we should leave them because this is what they're doing naturally of their own accord. What do you make of that? Yeah, well, uh, the welfare of the animals is also very important. Uh, you know, if, a, if an animal's been or a whale's been up on a beach for, for quite some time and it's a hot day, it's an outgoing tide, you know, you, you've got an animal there that, that really can't support its weight out of water. Um, it's also designed to have a lot of. Um, yeah, to, to keep cool by being in the ocean all the time and yet it's you know, with black skin on a, in the hot beach. Um, so they actually start to, to heat up and cook from the inside. So yeah, in a lot of those sorts of situations, just euthanizing them as soon as you can is actually the best thing for the animals.
And that is Dave Carlton of DOC. Um, as he mentioned, he spent the afternoon with some, with the help of locals and a digger burying about 50 whales that had stranded and died 